Hello friend! Today I'm going to be talking about 14 ways to show yourself love as a writer on Valentine's Day, right? Since it's the day of love, why not love yourself too, right? <laughs> but today this is a collab with author Sarah Sutton and she's amazing. If you haven't heard of her, be sure to check out her link below. She's doing 14 reasons why she loves being a writer. So be sure to check out her video down below as well. I normally do videos about the writer life, publishing tips and tricks, how to become a better writer, and I also do interviews with industry professionals in the writing world. So if that sounds like something you would be interested in, be sure to hit the subscribe button and smash that like button so other people can find this content too. I look forward to getting to know you. Let's hop into the 14 ways you can love yourself as a writer. Number one, buy yourself a new journal and make time and actually schedule it in your schedule for journaling. Make sure you set aside some time to, to write in your journal every week and this will help you just feel more balanced. Like I swear, whenever I spend time writing in my journal, it just feels like I, when I write down my feelings, it helps me out so much because I have so many thoughts and feelings so that when I write it out, it's all of a sudden I feel like I have a big weight taken off my shoulders. It's so nice. Take some time to get something like a massage. Get a massage or go and do a salt float. Have you ever guys done, have you guys ever done one of those? They're, they're super fun. Um, but I love massages. So I try to set up like a massage every month for myself because it's something that I really enjoy. And as a writer, we just spend so much time sitting. So our backs and our shoulders and our necks are are just feeling stressed compared to how they should be because we're kind of those awkward people who <laughs> have to sit at their desks to do their jobs. Um, another thing that also helps is maybe getting a standing desk. I have a standing desk that I love. I sit and then I remind myself, oh, wow, this also goes up so I could stand as well. Uh, it's a really good reminder to get yourself changing your um, kind of like where you write every day. Like even sometimes I come to the kitchen table just to change up the atmosphere or where I'm writing um, or I put my desk up so it's the standing desk version versus the sitting. And sometimes I just sit. But yeah, so investing in things that will help you feel better like a massage, maybe a pedicure, maybe a standing desk or a walking desk. My family has a walking, my parents have a walking desk that they love to use where it's ha it has like a walking treadmill underneath where you can walk on it and also type. I always have a hard time walking on it and typing at the same time because like I don't know. It's like my brain can only do one thing at one thing at a time and it can't walk and type at the same time. <laughs> so that is something that I found really helpful. Doing something like that for yourself where you're like getting a massage or just treating yourself with something that's going to help you in the long run. Number three is loving movement and stretching. So um, I heard loving movement. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of the fly lady, but I love her. Her name is Marla, and she is just amazing. I'm going to talk a little more about her in a little bit, but uh, the fly lady, that's her. And it stands for finally loving yourself, and she's just amazing. I love her. I'll link some of her videos down below so that you can go out and check her out. Um, but yeah, super, super great. So I, I heard from her where she's talking about like loving movement and that's what she called exercise. So I feel like exercise has always been a tough one for me because I've always felt like it's something, another thing that I have to do on the list of other things I have to do. And I haven't really ever enjoyed it. But from the moment that I heard loving movement, I've like, whoa, doing all of this is actually helping me. It's showing myself love by actually doing movement. So every day I've been trying to hop onto my bicycle and do like so many minutes. Like, and lately I've been like grabbing a book and I've been reading a book on my exercise bike right over here. And it's just been so nice. And it's been a wonderful way just to, you know, spend a little bit of time for myself during the day. 
Um, Because, like, as a writer, (laughs) I said this in the last point, we kind of spend a lot of time sitting. So um, if you're taking care of yourself and getting yourself moving and and stuff, you're you're gonna you're gonna put out better work because your brain's gonna work better. It's actually proven. I don't remember the exact statistic, but it's actually proven that after having moved. Um, and like worked out, your brain is actually more alive and more awake. I'll try and find the exact statistic. It's not exactly how I just worded it, but I'll share it below here. Um, so that's super amazing. And then stretching, you guys. Stretching is another amazing thing that I've really enjoyed. And I don't know if you guys have anything like this, but let me grab it. This is a roller. Uh, and it's amazing. Like I absolutely love it. It's so nice. So you just go lay down on the floor, put this beneath your back and you roll up and down on it and it like cracks your back and it feels so good, especially after sitting for a long time. Uh, it's a really nice way to kind of, um, break up your writing sprint times and everything so that you're getting a little movement into your back. And I think that loving movement, workouts, exercises, whatever you want to call it, um, I I kind of have gone from this, I have to do this, ugh, yuck, I just wish I didn't have to exercise, this is just not fun, it hurts, it's irritating, Uh, to um, I get to do this. It's something I get to do. There are so many people out there that would love to be where you are at in your health journey. They would love to be where you are. So um, this is something that I've done to actually really help 10x my life goals and everything is movement. Movement creates emotion and emotion helps you create stories. So um, that is one thing that I definitely recommend if you want to become better, a better writer, uh, loving yourself uh, is doing loving movement and changing the mindset that you have for exercise and just being excited about it. Okay, so I guess I kind of feel like I'm talking about health right now, but it's been kind of exciting because lately I've been on this health kick and it's been so good and I've just been feeling so much better. So I have to share this. This is number four. Eat every meal. So that's one thing as a writer, I'm sitting down and I am typing, 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 working, 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 and then I'm like, oh, it's just too much work to get up and go make breakfast because then I'm going to have to wash all the dishes and then I'm going to have to do this and that's going to take a it's going to take a lot of time and then I get a little lazy with that and I'm like okay no I'll just write and I'll eat lunch and then lunch time comes and I don't eat lunch because the same silly little excuses come up in my brain and then supper time comes and I eat way too much food and um feel bloated and disgusting and everything. So lately, this is another way that I've been showing myself love is making myself breakfast every single day, making myself lunch every single day, and actually plating it up, making it look nice like I'm at a restaurant and sitting down at my kitchen table. It's just me. I'm just sitting there by myself, but it's so nice because it just it's like me showing love to me by sitting down and treating myself like I would a guest in my house. It's, it's just something that's really changed my energy through the day. I have more energy. I don't feel like going and taking a nap. And it's just been really good. Number five, take some time and have grounding and uplifting conversations with other writers. This is something that I 100% stand behind. I love it. I love having great conversations with other writer friends. And I feel like as writers, we are kind of like most of us at least are introverted and we kind of like to, we're homebodies and kind of like to stay home and, and, um, be with our, our fur babies and just chill with our family. Um, and one way like that's really been helpful to me is just having a chat with like my critique partner at least once a week or, um, chatting with my beta readers or, uh, just other writers. So set up a time to chat with your writer friends. Six, give back. You know, we all start out at the same spot. We all start at the very beginning. And I just feel like it's super important to just take a little bit of time and help others walk up the ladder a little bit farther. Offering down your hand and helping them up and pulling them up beside you. Because once you do that, let me tell you, you're going to be blessed because of it. 
And number seven is set up a writing schedule. Like actually open up your planner and set a schedule. And I always like doing this on Sundays. Like here's a video up above about my Sunday planning method that I absolutely adore. You guys should check out the video. It's kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, so every Sunday I like to set down my schedule for the week and figure out, okay, what times I'm going to be writing, when I'm going to do my workout, like if I have any appointments or anything. And that's been super helpful. So that might be something that helps you out too. And I just feel like when you know what you're doing that week, it just helps you be more at ease and everything. So this is something in a way that you can show yourself love because who does, who likes being stressed out by not knowing what's happening that week? Also, this is number eight and this one kind of goes in with number seven. This one is writing sprints. Join in on writing sprints with writer friends. And if you don't really know if you don't really have many writer friends right now let me tell you there are so many great places to find them one place that I found a lot of my writing sprint friends and my writing friends are on Instagram and you can do that by just like checking out the hashtags like am writing or writer's life or writing life or indie authors of Instagram or just look at all those Instagram hashtags and go click on some people's pages and look at look at what they say and do and, and start following them. And you'll get to um, start creating some friendships that are just amazing. But I have a few friends who are like, you know, they'll reach out to me and say, hey, I really need to get some words written this week. I need to get like 4,000 words written on Monday and Tuesday. Can can we do a writing sprint that day? I Would you be up for doing a writing day? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> so that is so nice. So that's one thing I definitely recommend. Helps your writer heart get more words written and then you're not as stressed out with your schedules. End goals. Number nine, and this is something that my husband and I do quite often. We call them creative retreats where we basically go on, um, and this is after like a big project. He's finished like big projects for work and, and it's been stressful and crazy. And like for me, like finishing a big edit and I'm just like feeling like, ah, like I could pull my hair out. Of course I don't, but <laughs> I love going on these creative retreats because these creative retreats is kind of a time where I'm not writing, but like I'm thinking about writing and I'm like, I bring my notebook and I like write down a bunch of ideas and, and leave myself notes and, and thoughts about certain projects. I even brainstorm things. And usually we go to national parks for these because like, it's just nature both me and my husband, we are inspired by nature and being out in nature and going on hikes and, and driving through the park and seeing beautiful things and just relaxing in, in what God has given us. And it's just, it's so beautiful. So those kind of creative retreats are just awesome because at night we sit down and we're like both working on our own things and like just being inspired and um, inspired together. It's just really great. I definitely recommend um, doing a creative retreat sometime. And I'll do a video later kind of about these creative retreats because this weekend we're going to do a creative retreat and it's going to be fun. <laughs> and you can also do a staycation creative retreat as well um, if that's something that you're interested in as well. Okay, number 10. This is really important because as writers, I feel like it's very easy for us to just go into our office and shut the door right? Um, and especially like, uh, I mean, some people watching this might, you know, live at home with their family, live at home with their parents still. Like uh, we've got many different age ranges of people, young married couples, people with families, like kids and stuff. And it's super important to be thinking about the people that live in your house with you. So for me, that's my husband. Um, and in the future that will be kids. So I don't want to shut my door and just like forget about them because they're going to be important and I need to make sure that I show my love to my husband and help him and not just like focus just on me and my business and everything, but to like build our family and build our, our house and like make us really happy and successful. So one way that you can love yourself is by not locking yourself in your writing cave and just writing nonstop. Um, that sounds really, really productive, <laughs> but um, that's also why I was talking about in the writing, um, figuring out your writing schedule is setting up your writing schedule so that when you're writing, you are writing. Like that is your time to write. 
Um, but when you're not on your writing schedule, you're not writing. You might get story ideas. You might get um, little ideas or new ideas or ways to fix the plot, and that's great. That's usually when all of my story ideas come is when I'm living. But I always, like, open up my phone and, like, type in, like, the notes in the notes app. I'll do that. But I'm not, like, concentrating just on my writing. I am concentrating on spending time with my husband. Or maybe I'm reading a book and he's over here listening to an audiobook. Or, or we are watching a movie together or something like that. But those are really good things to keep in mind because we don't want to forget about or make our family members feel like they aren't important. Number 11 is read, read, read. <laughs> so last year I read like I think it was 65 books, I think. Yeah, so anyways, I'll put a video here up about like my my reading that I did this last year. But I read a lot of books and for 2022, I am going to be reading 100 books and I'm already behind, but I've been trying to catch up by reading tons. So, um, but yeah, I just feel like this is one way we can like refill our writer tank and it's just super helpful because like when you like, for instance, for me, sometimes I feel like my, um, my brain is just like blah at when I'm writing. So like then finding a book and starting to read it, it really helps me to see how they craft their sentences. And it kind of makes me feel like inspired and energized to see that I can do this. And it's really good. So start reading. Find some books that you might love. I'll share some videos as well below that I've done on different books that I've really enjoyed. Twelve, use zoning to keep your house feeling clean and organized and happy. So I mentioned Marla from the, the Fly Lady earlier, and um, she's amazing, you guys. I'm going to tag more of her videos down below, so be sure to go and check her out. But it's something that I found last year during 2021, and it changed, like, there are some areas in my kitchen I still need to clean up, but it's pretty much changed how I've done things, and it makes me feel way more calm and relaxed, and I really love that. So she says that, you know, like if you don't, if your house isn't clean, if things aren't put together and organized and relaxed, um, you know, it's going to make you feel like you can't have anyone over syndrome, and that's basically means chaos, can't have anyone over syndrome which totally makes sense. So um, she's got these cleaning zones where one week you might spend like 15 minutes cleaning like the bathroom or 15 minutes cleaning the front porch area or the mudroom. And it just makes it easier. So you're not just because like before I thought I had to spend a whole day cleaning the entire house and then I got overwhelmed and then I never got anything done. So one way that you can show yourself love is keeping your home environment feeling clean. And this is one way to simplify that so that you don't feel like you're just running out of steam and becoming overwhelmed. So definitely check out Marla, the fly lady. 13 is drink more water. <laughs> I've been trying to talk about like, like how we can love ourselves uh, physically, emotionally, um, and um, as writers, and like all of it is connected. Our whole life is connected. But um, when one area is working better, then your other area is going to work better, and then your writing is going to be better. So 13 is drink enough water. And um, before, like a couple of weeks ago, I was not drinking enough water. You guys, my hands were so dry. My, I had like a cracked lip. So gross, right? But like I've been drinking more water, and it's not there anymore. It like healed itself. Like, and my skin is not as dry anymore. So it's wonderful. So if you want to know how to figure out how much water you should be drinking, you should take your weight and divide it by half and then turn it into ounces. So basically, let's just say if somebody weighed... 100 pounds that that would be 50 half of that so 50 ounces that's how much water that person should be drinking a day um so it's really important and one good thing too about drinking a lot of water is you end up having to get up a lot 
to go to the bathroom. So getting up and walking around is also good because it's going to kind of add a little movement to your body again. So when you get back to the desk after, you're going to feel a little bit rejuvenated and you'll be able to keep working. And um, your mind will feel like, oh, that was a little, good little break to get up and now I'm back. Um, okay, and number 14, so this is our last one. Be patient with yourself. Yeah, I know. Nobody wants to hear that one. Because, like, I feel like it's so easy for us to get hard on ourselves. And I've also dealt with, like, imposter syndrome before. So, like, I feel like this is the moment where we can easily kind of be very rude and mean to ourselves by saying, oh, I suck. Or, oh, I'm a bad writer. Or, I'm never going to be successful at this. I'm just a failure. I mean, we can't do that. We need to change our mindset. We need to change our mindset to I am successful. I am a writer. I am a best-selling writer. So I totally recommend one way that will help you be patient with yourself and also help encourage yourself out of the imposter syndrome is writing down a list of your I am affirmations. And I'll put a link up or link somewhere here uh, that talks about the I am affirmations. And it's just been super helpful. So those are 14 ways, 14 ways that you can show yourself love this Valentine's Day as a writer. Hope that you have an amazing Valentine's Day and I love you guys and be sure to hit subscribe and smash the like button if you like this content because this is the kind of stuff that we talk about here on this channel. I also do interviews with industry professionals in the publishing world. So if that sounds like fun, come join me.